Hey guys, Ben Ramirez here with Go Rhino at the Go Rhino Garage here in beautiful Brea, California. Just purchased a new BR5 bumper for your Toyota Tundra. Stick around while we go over a quick video of how to install this bad boy. Thanks. All right, guys, so we're gonna get ready to do the uh, install on our BR5 bumper on our uh, Toyota Tundra right behind me. Um, so the first thing you, you're gonna wanna do is uh, get the installation guide. Now, if you notice, there's a box label on the box itself that uh, indicates that, that we've gone green, and so you have to visit our website to download the install guide. Uh, we've already done that here, and we just kinda wanna review a couple of key points uh, that's gonna make this install a lot easier. Um, when you pull the bumper out and you stage it in order to get it ready to for do the to do the install, um, you're gonna notice that it's gonna have these mesh plates that are already pre-installed. And when you remove those, exercise some caution. Try not to uh, use an, an air tool or an impact gun to remove those uh, butt head screws, as you may damage the nuts that's pressing it, or you may damage the threads on the butt head screw. Um, so, again, go back to the install guide and just make sure you review that you have all the components necessary to do the install. Um, and then also, we do provide a list as the, uh, the tools that are required to complete this install. Um, most of all these tools are just regular handheld tools that uh, you, know, you're, you, know, you should be able to have in your garage. Um, and then for this install, I went ahead and already grabbed all the tools I need. That way, it makes this install a lot easier and I don't have to be running back and forth. So just make sure you, uh, you do that as well. Uh, so the first step that, the, uh, that uh, you need to do, you need to make sure you disconnect the battery. And then the second step you're going to want to do is you need to remove some of these inside uh, balances on the inside. Um, in this case, it's going to just use a, a 10 millimeter bolt. So you're going to want to remove that stuff first. And again, uh, all this is uh, is explained in the install guide. So if you kind of feel like you're not on track with it, just go back and review it and you can reference to it. And then on the inside, there is a, uh, like a plastic tree clip. I'm gonna, gonna wanna pop that out using a flathead. So at this point, you're gonna remove the splash guard. And it's gonna expose the uh, back fog light harness. You're gonna to wanna to disconnect that as well. Now these fog lights are not gonna be retained in your new bumper. Um, if you are interested in adding fog lights or some type of a driving light, we do sell a, a pre-cut light plate that will support a rigid uh, flush mount light. Okay, so we've got that disconnected already. Okay. So then at this point, you're gonna wanna loosen forward nuts that are here, they're the bumper support brackets. So now that you've uh, unscrewed and taken all the fasteners out for the uh, splash card, you're gonna wanna remove that. Set that down right there. And then you're gonna wanna disconnect the lower balance. So 
So at this point, you're going to also want to remove the tow hooks if your vehicle has them equipped. It's going to make accessing the bumper bolts a lot easier. There's going to be four nuts that you're going to have to remove and that's what secures the bumper. Now you want to make sure you keep those nuts aside because you're going to be reusing those when you go back to install the, uh, the, some of the support brackets for the winch tray. So don't put those too far. At this point, you're going to want to do the same thing you did on the passenger side to the driver's side, and then we're going to be ready to remove the bumper. So now we've already removed the tow hook and we, we removed the, uh, the four nuts per side uh, for this install. Um, I do want to go over one additional note um, that the, some vehicles are going to come equipped with a, with a uh, front park assist sensor. For this particular install, it does not come with it, um, but if you do encounter that with your installation, make sure you disconnect them accordingly. Um, now the good news is, is with our bumper, we do give you a plug to cover up the provision if you do uh, not have the front park assist sensors. And again, as I mentioned, since this particular application does not have it, we're going to skip that step, but it is covered within the install guide. With assistance, carefully remove the front bumper. So now all the provisions that you're going to use to mount the support brackets for the winch tray are going to be all exposed. We're going to be using this location and underneath where the factory tow hooks were. I mean, like I said, just make sure you review to the install guide and that you compare all the brackets that coordinate with this application. And we're going to go step by step. All right, guys, welcome back. So we've already removed the uh, front bumper and we're going to continue with the installation of the additional support braces and brackets uh, that you're going to mount your winch tray to. Um, you're going to want to get the bottom bracket first. Now, keep in mind that uh, you still retain using, use, utilizing the tail hook bolts. So you're going to want to kind of just start those in. Now for this install, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that all the brackets are loose because you're gonna to have to go back and make some adjustments. We're gonna install the carriage bolt. last bracket for this is going to be the frame bracket and as I mentioned that you have to reuse the existing nuts uh, the, or the factory nuts As I mentioned, everything is relatively loose to allow for some adjustment because we're going to come back and install the winch tray. And then from there, we're going to go back and uh, finish the install of this bumper. And like I said, that's just going to involve installing your bumper. So stay tuned. 
All right, guys, welcome back. Um, now that we have our brackets set up and installed and everything's relatively loose, because uh, again, as I mentioned, this is gonna require some form of adjustment when you go back to install the, the front cover, we're gonna now install the winch tray. And what I've done, I've already pre-sorted all my hardware to make this installation a lot easier for me. Uh, that way I'm not running around. Now, keep in mind that you do want to keep this, uh, keep your hands on this, uh, because since everything's relatively loose, this can move. So once you put these six first six in, you're gonna to wanna to do the ones on the side plates here. And again, since everything's relatively loose, it's just gonna require some finessing to get everything to line up. And right now I'm just gonna leave everything hand tight. I'm gonna go back and make my adjustments and kinda of try to get everything bind up. Okay, so at this point you're gonna to wanna to make your final adjustments to bring this up and then you're gonna, we're gonna to prepare to install the front bumper cover but uh, that will require some assistance so stay tuned while we get there. Okay, so now we've made some serious progress uh, with the installation of our BR5 bumper for the Tundra. Um, kind of uh, some quick tips when you're doing the install. If you're planning on installing a winch, this is the time to do it, uh, mainly because it's gonna be nearly impossible to install a winch after you install the bumper cover. Um, and a, a quick note is, depending on the type of winch you go with, you may need to relocate the control box. Um, uh, a common place that a lot of people install it is behind the winch tray, they'll just make a, a hole cut out back here or they'll just do a they'll just redrill it to accept it and that modification will vary depending on the type of winch you go with um, but for this particular install we went ahead and already leveled everything out and pretty much fastened everything down there's gonna be very minimal play but uh, enough where we can go back and make any necessary adjustments and in addition we've masked off the uh, rhino horns here to protect it as we get ready to complete this install and on a side note for this particular install, we went ahead and installed the driver's side auxiliary bracket, but for demonstration purposes, we're gonna show you how to do it on the uh, passenger side. So for this install, you're gonna wanna use a supplied bolt plate, and when you use it, make sure you use the, the vinyl washer, and in doing so, it's gonna prevent you from, when you're doing the install, that it's gonna fall into the frame railing. The last thing you wanna do as you're almost done with an install is be fishing out a piece of hardware that's stuck inside your frame railing. like so. So from this point, you're just about ready to, to finish the install and to install your bumper cover. This is gonna require some additional help, so if you have a buddy, a neighbor, or something like that, make sure you give them a, a call and just call them out to give you a hand with this, this uh, portion of the install. Okay, uh, so n now we've staged our uh, front bumper for install and I got my buddy here to give me a hand, so let's go ahead and get this bad boy on. So for this install, we just started out doing two bolts just to hold it in place, but we're gonna go back and finish up the rest.
Okay, now that we have the bumper cover on, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go back and make any final adjustments. And we gotta remember to go back and bolt in the, uh, the outer auxiliary brackets. Remember you have uh, one on both sides. Okay guys, so at this point we're pretty much done with the installation of the front bumper. I've already made all of my final adjustments and squared it away properly. Um, we went ahead and left the access covers uh, exposed because we're, we're going to install the optional light bar. And this having this exposed or removed makes the installation a lot easier since the provisions are easier, easier to access this way. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and uh, install that. So now that we have this on, um, you can continue to mount the side access covers and as well as the winch cover. Uh, keep in mind again, uh, as we indicated in the beginning of the video, that uh, don't use any air tools when you're installing the butt head screws as that, that could damage the internal threads or the butt head uh, itself and that way it's gonna pretty much mess up your entire install. Okay, so at this point now we've already finished the install of the light on the optional light bar and you're going to want to install the mesh cover that covers the winch and as well as the, the side access panels. And just go ahead and match those up and just bolt them in accordingly. And the last thing you want to do with this install is the light plates. Uh, keep in mind that because this is a dual hole, it's got to be installed from the back side to cover one of the holes or the hole that's not going to be used. So these just come into the back. You just make the alignment and then you'll just bolt it in place here. Um, and then you can just button that up. So. And then from then on out, you're pretty much ready to enjoy your uh, your BR5 bumper. Um, again, thanks again for joining us here at the Go Rhino Garage. For f more videos and future videos, please visit our YouTube channel. Um, and thanks again for joining us.